Intelligence and Machine Learning, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dan Hood. Don't hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up. Hands up. So I have to share one anecdote before I go into this. On my 45-minute uh, commute in this morning, I heard three different segments on AI, one in which involved AI and bias, and this was on public radio. Okay, here we go. All right, so why number one? What you see here is a plot from Google Trends, tracking Google searches since 2014 on some of today's topic. Machine learning is the blue line, AI is the red line, the blue line wins. That's my mental state. Blue line has large positive slope. All right, so what are we talking about? AI is the science of engineering, of making intelligent machines. ML can be thought of as a subset of AI focused on algorithms computers use to perform tasks. What types of tasks, you may ask, things such as sound and image processing, problem solving, modeling, language processing, and understanding, these are really intelligence from an AI and ML perspective. So in I.O., I think we're still largely talking about AI from some blue sky perspective, talking about implications without much recognition that it's now reality. Take, for example, this following figure, which you may have seen. All right, it's a map of vendors and companies who play in the big data AI landscape. Nearly every industry is represented to include HR. Unfortunately, this graphic does little to reveal the depth or breadth of IO-related AI work that's happening in practice and research. Do you conduct research or practice in any of these domains? Take a look. If you do, chances are that there are AI-enhanced apps and research that currently exist that impact each of these. For example, on the recruiting and selection side, we have things such as recruiting text, auditing and generation, passive talent identification, person job matching, AI chatbots, gamified assessments, just to name a few. The list grows even longer on the performance management and development side. So AI technology is evident in several areas, such as personalized learning, continuous performance management and coaching, mentoring, as well as workforce analytics. So far from being isolated to I.O. practice, AI is also a reality in research as well. On the next slide, I'm going to show you a long list of articles and presentations. Focus on the blue words. Ready? Here we go. All right. So these sound like topics that are of direct interest to I.O. research and practice, right? So where do you think these are being published at and presented at? Surprisingly, there are entire domains of research on the assessment of individuals and jobs that exist in engineering and computer science outlets that are largely invisible to IOs. They are inciting us and we are inciting them. How is this possible? Part of this goes back to simple workforce demographics. There are simply a lot more engineers and computer scientists than there are IOs and this trend isn't abating anytime soon. To the extent industry values this, then these fields will take interest. But we may also be outgunned. There's a rapid rise of unstructured data on people, jobs, and groups and organizations, and methods for leveraging those data uh, are quickly emerging in engineering, computer science, and educational measurement. Lest you think this is a tale of woe and doom, it is not. Awareness is simply the first step to strategic action. And time and time again, SIAP has demonstrated that though we are small in size, we are fierce. <laughs> All right, so where do we fall? Enter the nerdy Venn diagram. <laughs> disciplines who play in the AI HR space, we all tend to be nerds. In this picture, we are all domain, we are the domain experts with a grounding in science and theory, which provides a bedrock for technology. Why is this important? Well, for one, all is not well in the state of AI when it comes to applications of concern to IOs. Every day, it seems like we're seeing popular press and even congressional inquiries about AI and bias. So one world we have is as auditor. We know what questions to ask, we know the research and theory behind them, and we know regulatory requirements underlying them. Besides being armed with nearly a century of uh, science, we also have principles and standards. For those of you who may not be aware, both PSYOP principles and APA standards offer very clear language and guidance on the use and evaluation of algorithms for measurement. 
going to breathe for a second. <laughs> but we're more than just auditors. We're catalysts for improvement. We can be the creatives and visionaries in this space, identifying areas of HR where these technologies have the most impact and where research gaps provide. We could be co-developers working hand in hand with engineers to reflect what our fields have to offer. So in terms of my call to action, don't assume research or practice pertinent to your areas isn't happening in the engineering or comp site literatures, because it is. Check out the major outlets from other associations. Prepare to be surprised and somewhat humbled. Don't be intimidated. We have a valuable skill set to offer, but we can't do this alone. We live in a multidisciplinary world now, and more than ever, we need to embrace that while maintaining our strong IO identity. That's the benefits of going last. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.